Well, it is just me and the birds and the squirrels out this morning. It's a little bit before 8, and I wanted to show you a project that I'm getting ready to tackle. Now, I know you guys like seeing me actually do the work rather than describe the work, and I will perform for you a little bit later when I've got Stuart here to capture me actually reworking this bed because it is in sorely need of some attention. This is underneath my kitchen window. I've got this beautiful palladium window here and a large window box. So the window box was built years and years ago. It is custom stained to match the stain on my house and it's quite heavy. It's got a metal liner in it and it does have drainage. And I'm sorry, I can't tell you the dimensions right now, but you can, more importantly than the dimensions would be the scale. And you can see if you're considering doing a window box on your own house, the approximate ratio of the width and the depth of the box to the window. But I digress. I wanted to talk a little bit about this whole area and what I need to do to make it a little bit more attractive and get it under control. So let's start with some of the surrounding plants. Uh, this is one of the, the uh, specimens you guys ask about a lot. This is a blue atlas cedar, a weeping blue atlas cedar. And the bottom portions of it really need more light. So I'm gonna do some trimming on that. A lot of the needles have started to fall and it's very annoying because they fall on my furniture and get in the woven, uh, the weave of the chair. So I'm, I am going to do some pruning on that and tidy that up. And then you'll see how I've contained the English ivy that grows on the wall. And I am going to trim that just a bit, but you can see how I don't let it get too tall and grow too vertically because I don't want it to climb all the way to the top and up my steep roof. So I am going to be taking care of that a little bit later. Now primarily what I'm going to address is the window box itself, which is full and, and lush right now and it's got what I would say are good bones, but it just needs some tending. So there are some dead leaves in there. I have already been treating it, but I'm going to continue to treat it and also prune. I've got two baby gem boxwoods. Those are southern living plants on either side of the window box. And the one on the left has some brown tipping and I've been tackling spider mite there. So I'm going to cut both of those back and try to get some better air circulation in there. I've kind of lost the form of my swags and I am going to reestablish that. I'm going to thin it out just a little bit and tidy it up. Now I don't have any color in there right now. If uh, next year I'll probably, since the caladiums in the front have performed so brilliantly, I'll probably plant some caladiums in there next year. But right now I'm content with it just being green and I will probably just plop in some seasonal color for fall when it turns cool again. One thing Hubs and I like is, uh, let me see if it's still there or if he's moved it to refill it. Sometimes I have a tiny little metal bird, bird feeder in there and that way we can put bird seed in it and I can over my, as I'm doing the dishes, I can see the birds, they will light on the windowsill and eat the bird seed and it's kind of a little daily joy. So you can see some dead leaves in there that need to be remedied. Now if you need some plants for shade, here is a list. This Acuba japonica, its common name is a gold dust plant, has been here for a very long time and it performs brilliantly in the shade. And yes, I could keep it contained and I should have, have kept it contained and pruned so that it's not quite so high. I will do that in the spring. Probably now is not the time that I want to, to do that. Um, another kind of the, oh, just facet of it that I really like is the foliage is beautiful 
and looks great in cut flower arrangements. And it puts out red berries and it is just really a trooper. It performs beautifully in the shade. And then behind it uh, and in the foreground you can see some Japanese spreading yew that have just gotten huge and both of those yews actually were transplanted from the front many years ago. And I need to clean up some of those brown needles but the textural contrast I think is really a winner for the shade. So yews and Akuba japonica. So I really like that. Um, now back in here this area is, is, as I say occasionally, this is an area that's on autopilot. It's where my Suncast hose reel box is. I got that at Home Depot and it's kind of hidden back in there and my water faucet is underneath the window box. Now the left side of this bed looks pretty good, albeit overgrown. The right side has had some storm damage. Um, there was some cable line work and you can see over here that it's been trampled. Uh, one of the camellias in the back was pretty severely damaged. I've got some cable lines that need to be hidden. And then here's my much cherished suncatcher chain from my friend Janet, Hungry Holler. You can follow her on Instagram. And so this whole area over here is just looking rough and twiggy and woody. And then I think I told you that I'm kind of reworking the steps. So this area off of my house in its entirety is going to be the flower bed that I tackle next. It is right here near what we call the bistro area. And this really won't take me too long to tidy up, but it desperately needs to be done. That's a Terra oak leaf hydrangea in the foreground. And then you can see across from the larger Akuba, there is a smaller Akuba japonica. So all of you that are lovers of shade gardening, these are some great shade plants. And then I've just got my trusty Nandinas in the back that can perform in either sun or shade. But I do need to fill that gap back there. I need to remedy the sad damaged plants in this corner. You can see there's another Utopia U there. That's a Southern Living plant and some sweet little flirt Nandinas in the foreground. And yes, there's a a sprinkler head. I have spoken in the past about when we moved into the house that it was painted kind of a creamy color gray and I leave this white streak here as an homage to what it looked like before we sandblasted it. That's where a downspout used to be. And yes we could paint over it but I I don't know I just I, I like the history of it. And then we have outdoor speakers that really, in my ideal world, should be black and I should paint them. All in due time. But look how pretty that greenery looks just against the delicacy of the wrought iron work. And I, of course, love the stone. So this whole area is going to get a rework. But you might want to take a note. Let me. I will um, relist them for you. If you need some plants for shade, and these are largely evergreen, then use uh, Japanese spreading use or Utopia plum use, Akuba japonica or the gold dust plant. Nandinas work well. Some of those flirt Nandinas stay low. And then in the window box, that is just a combination of boxwood, lemon lime nandinas, variegated ivy, some hosta, English ivy. And again, I could probably in the fall, wouldn't it be pretty to just pop in um, and nestle in some large pots of maybe white mums or pink mums or yellow mums, any color of mums. 
So that is the area I am going to rework and you guys hopefully will join me in the garden as I redo this area. Oh, because some of you will ask, that is a vent right there. I have a, a wolf commercial range on the inside of my kitchen. You can see it underneath that hanging, that bar with pots and pans hanging from it. And I probably need to, then I'll wash this window, which is always so nice then to have the window washed. I'll water and feed everything really well. Maybe do a touch up of paint on the window box. But that's kind of the list of things to do when I tackle an area. And even though it looks okay right now, it doesn't look great. And I'm going for great. Gardens are dynamic things. They are never static, and there's always something that needs to be worked on, remedied, repaired. And this corner right here is in desperate need of some repair work. So, happy Tuesday morning. Stay safe, stay well, and stay cool. Have a good one, you all.